Hi there, I'm Taylor Jackson, and welcome to this free one hour wedding photography marketing workshop. I think we just ran out of batteries in the remote. I'm joined by Lachlan, who's uh, gonna walk us through some of it. So this is kind of an abridged version of a much longer course that you are allowed to sign up for, and it's also free. But today, I'm a little bit more part of it. Thanks, Taylor. So let's, uh, very nice of you. let's begin. <laughs> Plug and play. One hour photography marketing crash course. This is new to me. Here we go. I'm here to talk about how you, if you're a photographer that really identifies more as like the artist first and kind of probably got into the business because you just like started taking photos of friends or bands or I got in gear Babies, first. I was gears, gear first. Gear guy. I needed a way to support my gear addiction. <laughs> Supporting your gear addiction, so and I'm then suddenly me. people are like, "Hey, can you can you do can you can you take photos of my wedding? Can you take photos of my kids? Maybe you're that type of photographer, and you've just been kind of like thrown into the business part of it. Well, I want to show you guys what a kind of marketing plan or marketing strategy looks like for your business because. Honestly, you are pretty much a small business. You need to have really a system in place. Um, but before we dive into that, I wanna talk about why, obviously you can trust Taylor, but I wanna talk about why you should maybe also trust me. <laughs> Taylor, why should people trust me? People should trust you. I think so, at least when when we, oh, oh that's, <laughs> I haven't seen that picture, it's beautiful. <laughs> when we first met, you definitely come from a sales background, which, I think that a lot of the photography education definitely just kind of gets recycled and I feel like nothing is really new-ish. Um, that everything that I learned from people back in 2008, with the exception of maybe social media is new, but pretty much everything has remained the same and there haven't really been a whole lot of fresh voices in the photography and the wedding photography marketing industry. Uh, so that's why I was open to learning a little bit more about your thoughts. And then when you redesigned my entire website and uh, kind of changed everything, it really just, I don't know, solidified that like, okay, you do know what you're doing. And us as wedding photographers, we're, we're okay at marketing, but we've never really thought about what a proper funnel is. We've never really thought about like how to actually create calls to action that get you booked and to create packages to make it easy for clients. Uh, so those are the things that you taught me that have changed my business. And uh, I'm excited to learn a little bit about what you got going on here as well as offer my feedback and things that I've experienced uh, throughout this free one hour. Is it one hour? We'll you, see. You know more than us. Counting down. You can look at the timeline. <laughs> we don't have that timeline yet. Well, thanks so much, Taylor. Uh, obviously, uh, Taylor trusts me, so obviously you should just trust me too. But <laughs> no, in reality, um, I think what's interesting is Same that, here. Like, like Taylor mentioned, I come from, a sales and a tech background, not from a photographer background. In fact, I'm actually not a photographer at all. I got into this because I came from the other side of the equation, which was I was a client. For me, it actually all started um, with a trip to Banff. Uh, I was taking my partner Erin there for our anniversary. I kind of grew up in the Banff area and I wanted to show her the mountains and I was hoping to have a photographer there to actually capture that experience for us. I'm kind of a sappy guy. I was hoping to like have um, like a nice little scrapbook of photos from that trip. And actually this photo right here is the only photo that I have of Aaron and I from our Banff trip. It's a really nice photo of us, but it doesn't show off the mountains. You know, it's, it's not professional. And the reason why this is the only photo is because I went and I tried to book a photographer. I was like, I have $500. I want to book a photographer to get really nice photos. And I did what most people do. I went on Google, typed in Banff couples photographer, went to all these websites that I found on the first page of Google. I was like, photos are amazing. This is great. How do I actually book you? I want to make this happen. So I sent off emails. I did a bunch of like messaging back and forth. And ultimately what happened was there was so much back and forth that no one was able to close me as a client. And I didn't end up finding a photographer, which is really sad. And it kind of got me thinking that like, why is it so hard to book a photographer? You know, is there a better way to do it? Why are there so many photographers out there who I knew later on that there were so many photographers in Banff who were open to shooting me, 
when I only found these photographers kind of on the first page of Google, they weren't available or they kind of give me the ring around the bush. And it's really disappointing because I knew that there were people out there that could have delivered that amazing experience that I wanted for Aaron and I. And so that's really where I come into the industry. And as Taylor mentioned, I come from a sales background. And what I see is that most photographers, maybe not the ones like necessarily who are really nailing it are on the first page of Google, but there are so many of you out there that could be nailing it and could be that photographer that I wanted in Banff. Unfortunately, the reality is that creative people often suck at selling. You're awful salespeople. In fact, most of the time I see, you know, the photographers that I've worked with, over a thousand, they often get in the way of their clients giving them money. And that was the frustrating experience for me was I really wanted to book um, a photographer, but then people were like, oh, like, let's have a meeting or more, you know, tell me more about what you want. And what I wanted was just to come on someone's website, see, you know, an experience or a package that was like Banff couples photo session, you know, we'll do a little walk around the town, get some photos of you in the mountains, it'll be about an hour, you know, book here, hit the button, put in your credit card and let's do this. And, and so really that's what gave me the idea for Focal. I wanted to create that system for photographers out there so that clients like me could actually book and give you guys, give you guys some money. <laughs> I want to share like a really quick experience, a two experiences actually. Um, this is, Taylor will remember this. So we tried to hire a band for a NADA conference that we put on <laughs> in Nashville. These guys, they're called the Beans and they're epic. And um, really, really funny because we were like, hey, like we'd love to book you for, you know, a little like one hour gig. Like, you know, could you guys do it? And they were like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, we'll come, we'll set up. Um, and I was like, great, you know, like, tell me how much I'll be. They were like, okay, I'll be $300. And I was like, sounds awesome. I was actually willing to pay a lot more. That's, that's great. And, but we were all kind of settled. And then I got a message from the Beans, just like right before the event was supposed to happen. And their message was like, hey, Lachlan, we've been thinking, uh, you know, it's a lot of like work for us just to come for an hour and like set up all our gear and then play and like we were just wondering like would you maybe consider paying us like four hundred dollars instead of three hundred dollars but you know if that's not cool like we'll still do it for 300 and i was like oh my god this is like the worst salesperson i've ever experienced this is just like the typical creative person i'm like absolutely i'll pay you four hundred dollars you're worth it you know if you can just communicate that value to your clients they're going to be totally willing to pay that as well Another funny example really quickly, I was in Portugal and I found this guy, uh, he was like standing behind his little table with his collage art. Uh, he'd, he'd been published in like Vogue magazine. He was honestly like, his, his artwork was amazing. I like came up to his like little stand and I was like looking at all his art, but he didn't say anything. I was just like looking, I was making it really obvious that I like liked it, but I had no idea like super awkward like how do I like can I buy it is it for sale or are you just kind of showing it on this table here <laughs> and then eventually I was like you know like oh is this like for sale and he's like oh yeah yeah definitely like you know if you want to buy like more than one two I can give you a deal and like I was already sold on his art I was gonna buy it I was probably willing to pay like quite a bit of money and it's like that with photographers your clients they're coming seeing your work they love what you do they want to book you, you just have to make it easy for them. And so that's really what this, this course is all about. It's how can we create a plan or a system that's plug and play, something that you can inject into your business to cover kind of all the bases that you need to for getting clients to be able to easily give you money when they want to. And so, yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, come on screen here. So. I definitely struggle with selling anything. Uh, I feel like um, it's maybe the Canadian sales strategy. Uh, I would much rather just put out in the world what is available and have people book that rather than ever doing any sort of like hard sales or negotiations. Um, that's not something that I am one good at to have a desire to really be trained at, even though I know that it probably could be a good thing. And three, I don't know. I just, I like, the process, I feel like I attract those clients, the clients that I like to work with a little bit more accurately, I guess, um, when I have everything out there and I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. So 
Yeah, uh, and and I think like more and more in like society and the way people are behaving now, you know, they don't really want to be sold to anymore. Like Taylor's kind of mentioning, people want to be empowered when they're making decisions. You know, about booking wedding photographer, booking, you know. A family photo shoot, that sort of thing. They want to be able to get the information, and then a that also makes it really easy for you as a photographer because it alleviates the burden of having to do all the selling yourself. It alleviates that awkwardness and that stress. And so, really, like this course is all about, you know, if you're the type of photographer that you want clients to come to your website, see your work, be able to be like, hey, Taylor, I want to book you, and Taylor's like, yes, and he presses the accept button. They pay, sign the contract, and everything's good. Then that's really like what this system's all about, and it's a big difference from like kind of what Taylor was talking about. Traditionally, I think in the industry, it was like hide pricing. Let's make our yeah. clients contact us. Rip Let's... up prints if, in front of people if they don't. That's my favorite story. I won't mention who it is. He's a very well-known photographer. You come in for his in-person sales session, and he'd have all the prints for you to buy. And if you didn't buy them, he would rip the first one up in front of you. <laughs> And then you're obviously going to buy the rest of them. It's so aggressive. No, please. <laughs> and I could just never really like. I understand how that could convert money, but it was wasn't something that I was uh, that I really wanted to be a part of. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to stand over here now. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, I think Taylor, like he said, like clients m more and more are not wanting to kind of have that experience of like, you know, say they're buying a car, coming into the dealership, having a salesman like take them by the hand and be like, let me show you this Chrysler you can buy and slaps the roof, right? More and more people are kind of coming into a dealership. They've done their research online. They know exactly like the type of car that they want. They don't want to have that kind of uncomfortable feeling of being sold. They don't want to negotiate. You know, if they can go online, find exactly the car they want with the trim package and the financing rates, and they can just show up at the dealership and be like, here, here's my check. And then they get their car like that. That's a much more seamless experience, and so really, what I'm trying to do is bring that to the photography industry, which I think it's it's sorely lacking. So, I just kind of wanted to cap that off with the fact that I'm really passionate about helping photographers help their clients. Like, I want you to deliver your clients an amazing experience, and I think another way to think about it is if you can if you can deliver a really frictionless experience for your clients booking you, it's going to make them happier. You know. Uh, they're not going to feel like they're getting sold. They're going to be able to book you and have their moments captured when they want to. You know, you shouldn't get in the way of that. And so there's nothing to feel sleazy about. You know, you're running a business. People love what you do. Just let them, let them be able to get it. <laughs> so the next thing I kind of want to talk about as far as them being able to actually book you and um, discover you and check out your work is I want to talk about the, the marketing funnel. What is the marketing funnel for photographers? How does a client actually go through that process of, you know, maybe discovering you for the first time all the way to paying and signing the contract and then, and then having the shoot? So Mr. Taylor, let me ask you this question. Hello there. But first we have to watch this little guy. Oh, that, that's cute. <laughs> so I think a lot of photographers, this is what's happening to them. They're like, oh no, <laughs> my client. This is gonna be your TikTok dance. That's marketing right there. We don't want that to happen to you, right? So what I want to talk about is how do clients actually book you, Taylor? If you thought, if you take it like all the way to the beginning, like say somebody doesn't know you, what's the first like touch point or first like th way they might find you, discover you, know about Taylor Jackson? I would say now it is going to be one of three things. And if all three of them happen, so if your client or your couple organically come across you in all three of these places, um, or I guess one of them could be paid. If they've come across you at three places, you got three touch points, you're very, very likely to be trusted and they're very likely to book you. Number one, I think now, um, this is speaking from a person that's been in the industry for like 15 years now. Um, I think most of my leads are coming from venues. So being a preferred mm -hmm. vendor at a venue, yeah. um, that is recent as of like 2019, I would say, is when that took over. Prior to that, it was, primarily SEO, I would say, with social media, Instagram, and Facebook at the time was kind of that almost up, it was almost a 50-50, it was maybe like a 60-40 for a couple of years, um, but one of those places. So either paid on social media 
or through uh, SEO. SEO seems to when people are searching for their venue and you can educate them about your venue, it just seems to be a very good way to get the, the couple to be really interested in your services. And uh, yeah, that was, and then the, the new one of being a preferred vendor, which you nailed takes it. some time. Take some time. Were those the three? Have you seen this course before? <laughs> <laughs> I have not. You missed one. You missed word of mouth. Okay. Does no one no one refer you? I think so, but I think it's like <laughs> mostly the venues or That's other fair. vendors That's now fair. That's um, fair, yeah. that are referring. Um, but then I would also attribute most of the word of mouth. Um, most of that funnel comes in, I would say, usually through... Or like past, bra past, past weddings, right? Yeah, too. but when people inquire, I don't know, it seems like it could be an SEO inquiry. Mm. Um, unless it's somebody that I knew from a wedding party at another um, wedding. Yeah. I just might not have visibility. I deleted uh, the, uh, like we were talking about in one of the past videos, um, that I used to have like 10 things on my contact form. And when Focal <laughs> built me my site, they were like, oh, how about like a couple? How about we get rid of like six of those? Um, so now I'm a little bit more blind to some things. Like I don't, I could add the, the box back. How did you find out about me? But um, I don't really have that data anymore. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, you nailed it. You mentioned SEO, social media, Instagram, probably YouTube. Um, Should have done like Family Feud style. Yeah. With the, <laughs> next time, next time. Preferred vendors. You got word of mouth. So yeah, like Taylor mentioned, those are all like the different ways that clients first might discover him as a photographer. And at that point, they have kind of two major buying questions. So that's the other thing we want to think about is where are they finding you as a photographer? But then also, you know, what, what do they want to know at that point? And at that point, it's like, you know, do I like Taylor's work? And do I like Taylor? Do I imagine him being, you know, a, a great addition to the experience of, of my day or my couple's photo shoot? Can I, can I imagine him being there? Does, do I trust him? Does it make me comfortable? And so, I'm really glad that you identified that because yeah, there's a lot of different channels that clients can discover you. And what we really wanna do from a marketing plan is understand where those people are coming in to our funnel and then figure out where they're going next. So after they find you on Google, social, preferred vendor list, where do they go next, Taylor? I think website. I know that some will send the DM on Instagram, be like, are you available? Um, I find that that's a bit of a messy in my brain to have like, some people are texting me about inquiries, some are through my email, some are through DM. It's just too much. So even if they do inquire over DM, I always point them to my mm. website because that is, as of now, where all my packages are. So that's like all the information they could ever know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say that's kind of the number one place that everybody goes. Definitely. After yeah. deciding that they maybe want to contact me from Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So obviously like you mentioned website packages, that's huge. That's kind of like where they go next. All those different places, the Google SEO, the social, the preferred vendors, they all flow into the website. And so that's kind of where they, it's like the landing zone for all those customers. And, and like Taylor mentioned, I'm just gonna pull up another slide really quickly here. Um, sometimes what happens is they, they DM. So they go to social or this also happens if the, if you as a photographer, you don't actually have a website. Yeah. So if there's just no website to go to, then most of the time, or yeah. if they can't find it, if they, if they try to type you it. in and Google, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then, then they just end up kind of reaching out to you. The, the issue with that is a, um, you're kind of eliminating yourself. If you don't have a website, a, what, you know, you need a website to show up on Google. So that's eliminating one of the major channels that, people would typically find Taylor. I don't think a preferred vendor is really gonna list you if you don't have a website. No. Have you ever seen that happen? I think <laughs> it's just an Instagram, no. No. Um, I think it's, it's like, it's your storefront. Right? It's, you have to, even if you find that most of your work comes in through Instagram, it is still so important to have that storefront um, for you, other vendors and venues as well. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and like Taylor mentioned, like having that website for him with his packages there, having all that information there, it helps alleviate like this. Because what happens is if you don't have that like middle landing ground for all those different channels and they just DM you, then you get bombarded with all these questions. 
how much are you? You know, what are your different packages? You know, and then they start telling you their, you know, their whole story about what they're looking for. And they're trying to make sure you're a good fit, trying to build trust. And it kind of like shifts all this burden to you suddenly through yeah. now having to do it all and in that's DMs. like a 24 hour a day thing too. people when they DM you and they see that you've posted a story, they expect that you get back to them. Whereas email, I find that it is important to get back to people quickly, but there seems to be a little bit more of a work day around that, that people understand if you respond between the hours of nine to five, whereas social, it, it seems like it can just be anytime and people are just upset if you're not getting back to them at 10.30 at night on a Sunday. Yeah, right on. After the website, they make inquiry, they want to book. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yeah. So obviously what you want to do is in th at the very bottom of the funnel, when you're getting that inquiry or a DM or however the client is reaching out to you, you want to make it really easy for them to book. You don't want to get in the way. I, I can't count the number of times like I've been, I've been mentoring photographers and they're like, Lachlan, 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 I want to get on the first page of Google. I want to do SEO. I want to like blog. I'm like, okay, but like, hold on a second. Like, tell me like how many inquiries are you getting a month right now? And they'll be like, oh, I'm getting like 10, I'm like 10 inquiries. It's awesome. Like, why do you want to like work on SEO right now? And they're like, well, you know, you know, I'm not getting as many bookings as I want. And I'm like, well, why is that? Like how many of those 10 inquiries are you actually booking? And they're like, Oh, you know, only like one or two. And I'm like one or two. Don't work on SEO if you're only booking one or two of your inquiries. Work on turning those inquiries into bookings. That is gonna give you an immediate benefit over trying to increase your SEO. Because if you think about how the funnel works, you know, some people are coming in at the top and then they might kind of fall out of the funnel like the little, poor little leaky guy there. And so just the fact that they got to the very bottom, oh my goodness, those are like your highest priority. Uh, if you can increase your booking rate from like one or two to more like, seven or eight or nine out of 10, then immediately you just like tripled or doubled your bookings and you didn't have to like fight and write a hundred blog posts to come onto the first page of Google. So make sure that you actually have a smooth system. Like when I was inquiring with photographers in Banff, you know, they lost me around like the fourth email or sometimes I'll work with photographers and I'll be like, okay, yeah, you got 10 inquiries. Let's look through them. And the client will be like, Hey, I want your website. Uh, your your uh, your full day wedding package with the second shooter in the video that looks awesome for us you know let us know what the next steps are like that's the inquiry and I'm like excuse me did you <laughs> did you not book this mr. photographer and he's like oh yeah you know like they didn't they never got back to me or whatever I'm like show me the message thread and so I go and I look at their email and they like I look at the reply email and it's like Thanks so much for saying such nice things about my work. Um, please send me three times that you would be, be available for a Zoom call. Like that will be the reply to that <laughs> inquiry message. And I'm like, <laughs> that's a send an email request payment thing is booked. Exactly. You can always like set those meetings up later. Um, but you know, don't get in the way of, of, uh, getting bookings. Don't get in the way of clients wanting to give you money like I did when I was in Banff. So make sure you have a proper system for turning those inquiries into bookings. So that's really what the whole photography marketing funnel is all about. And we want to make sure that we kind of streamline that and plug any of the leaks in the poor little leaky guy, right? So <laughs> just to kind of summarize here, first of all, you don't want clients you know, kind of coming in from all these channels or you're putting all this effort into becoming a preferred vendor or boosting your SEO. And then, you know, we, we don't want to, we want to make sure that they're actually getting to your website. You, you want to make sure you have a way for clients to get from like your socials, like have a thing that says, you know, booking weddings, 2024, here's my website link, go there for information. You know, you want to make sure that your preferred vendors are, are sending clients to your website and then that's going to make sure that clients are kind of progressing through the funnel. And then again, you really don't want to have them leaking out at the bottom. So my recommendation is if you're analyzing your own funnel, start at the bottom. If you're getting inquiries, focus on trying to turn as many of those into bookings. If you're not getting inquiries, focus on improving your website and making sure that you're getting traffic to your website. And so this is really what the whole photography marketing funnel is all about. We want to make customers flow super nicely through funnel so that you make lots of money and so that 
your clients have a great experience being able to book you and don't get frustrated. All right, so how do we actually develop a system that works as smoothly as this? How do we get clients discovering us on Google, finding us on social, going to our website, making an inquiry, pressing a single button so that we can send off a payment link and a contract and a questionnaire? We need to actually set up a system for this. So first of all, I wanna make sure that you guys have your head wrapped around this whole kind of customer journey. This is what I want for you. I want you guys to have great SEO where clients can actually find you, uh, your blog posts, your website, your packages. Um, here's a focal photographer, her name's Alana Jordan. She told me the other day that she put up a micro wedding collection and now for micro wedding photography in Chicago, it is actually ranking on the first page. She has like a nice little three hour package that's ranking right on the first page of Google. And that's just because her website is configured properly so that her packages um, actually show up on Google. So if you guys have watched uh, the website roast, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, please go watch our recent website roast video. because we'll talk all about, you know, why it's really important to actually configure your, your website and your SEO in a way that Google can read the pages and, and make sure that you're actually on Google. Um, I want you to kind of be able to write blog posts like, like this here. Like we have four fathers brewing wedding photography. Look at this. This is the first page here. Look who it is, Mr. Taylor Jackson. <laughs> Alicia and Mike's wedding celebration at Four Fathers Brewing. And a little bit further down, oh no, wait, I passed. Oh yeah, I passed. Lindsay, Lindsay is higher than you, Taylor. What are you gonna do about this? It's okay. <laughs> She's a preferred vendor there. I just got the booking through her because she was already booked. Right on. That's another channel, I guess. Yeah, this is great. So this is an example of how, like if you write some blog posts about different weddings you've shot, um, they can show up on Google as long as your SEO is configured properly. Another great example, uh, Alan McDermott, his focal website, he's got this awesome Killy Lay Castle uh, blog post, literally number two on Google for that wedding venue. Another example, number one today, actually I was checking out Brenton the other day and he was number two, but today it looks like he's number one. So Brenton Cox, who's in uh, Orange, New South Wales, he's ranking for wedding photographer in Orange, New South Wales, which is like victory as far as yeah. like SEO goes. This is what I want you guys to be able to do with, with your business. And so it's not that hard. What it comes down to is making sure your website is actually set up properly so that Google can read it. And then number two, actually creating content to show Google that you have information on your website about the things that people are searching for. So those are two things that you can actually do with a focal website. So the technical SEO is actually all taken care of for you. So, you know, if you're not using a focal site, make sure you're actually going in, configuring your meta titles, your meta descriptions, make sure you're submitting your sitemap to, or actually creating a sitemap first and then submitting that to Google. Um, or, you know, obviously if you have a focal site, that's all taken care of. And then maybe going in and actually blogging. So like creating blogs like Taylor and Lindsay are here. Which are also super easy. So that the Lindsay's post, it's a little bit older, I think. Whereas my post went up last week and it's an Insta blog post. So you connect your Instagram to your focal backend and you basically click generate blog posts. You type a few sentences in and it auto generates text for you. And it also pulls all the images from an Instagram carousel. So the, the ease of blogging is significantly easier now. Um, I, I'm not gonna say it was ever a problem, <laughs> regular blogging, but I just didn't do it as much as I should have. And now it is just so much easier. So like Taylor mentioned, uh, you can use the same AI blogging assistant through Focal if you have a Focal website to create blog posts just like the one that Taylor's like ranking for here on the first page of Google. It's super awesome too because you can actually connect your Instagram and use our Instablog feature. Here we are, um, we have the lovely uh, Natalie Hayden who has offered for me to use her as my test site uh, guinea pig here. When you log into your focal dashboard, you'll be greeted by our brand new blogs tab. Um, and the first thing you might notice here is what's this Instagram connect? <laughs> well, this is actually the ability to connect your Instagram account to focal 
and start using our awesome Instablogs feature. What our Instablogs feature does is it actually allows you to select Instagram posts right from your focal dashboard and then import them using our AI assistant to turn them into SEO driven, high quality content blog posts. And the whole idea is, you know, if you guys have time to at least post on Instagram, well, now you don't need to put in any extra effort to turn those into really, really great SEO content. So I'm just going to pick one of Natalie's Instagram posts here. This one looks like a cool one. Um, okay, awesome. So this is a beautiful ceremony in Uptown Waterloo, followed by Waterloo Park. Um, so it imports all the caption here and you can actually, of course, add more or adjust the caption, but I'm lazy. So I'm just going to hit the next button and we're going to let the blog generator go to work. Now this can take a few minutes. So um, just to show you how legitimate this is, I'm not even going to bother pausing the video. I'm just going to let it do its thing. And um, I'll talk a little bit in the meantime about blogging. So. The value of blogging as a photographer, in my opinion, is that you have a lot of really, really unique experiences being that you maybe shoot at the same wedding venue many times. Um, you probably know the best things about that wedding venue. You probably know kind of the pros and cons. And all of that is really, really valuable information that you can actually, you know, maybe convey to couples that are considering booking that venue. You know, this is just one example of that experience that you can kind of pass on to your clients. I'll come back to this in a second, but uh, this is the perfect example because our AI blog has just finished generating. It's imported the media here from Instagram. So this beautiful image that Natalie took, and then it's managed to create this fantastic AI uh, driven and SEO driven blog post right out of that Instagram caption. So look at this, isn't it amazing? An intimate Uptown Waterloo wedding embracing rainy days. In the heart of Uptown Waterloo, an intimate ceremony unfolded embodying the essence and love committed in its purest form. Wow, this is not your typical grandiose event with hundreds of guests and bustling reception, rather an intimate gathering filled with close friends and family who came together to celebrate the union of the two souls. Um, talks about, you know, uh, the friends and family in Waterloo Park. It also imports a lot of the images and even creates a grid right off uh, the Instagram post here. And of course, you can go ahead and delete or change any of these images here. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. So you as a photographer, you get to experience all these different you know, locations, venues, you get to see tons of weddings. And that actually gives you a really unique perspective that I think you can share with clients and so, for example, if I'm thinking of getting married in Waterloo um, and I see some of these photos that you took, you know, and I maybe get some of that unique perspective, maybe you talk about, you know, the positives of getting married in the park. Uh, maybe it's lower cost. Maybe it's more, you know, intimate. Maybe it's more flexible, um, more adventurous. But, you know, maybe the downsides are uh, that it, it can end up raining. <laughs> I think it actually mentions this somewhere. I actually just saw this in the post here. But, you know, it talks about the simplicity of the event. Oh, and then the need for umbrellas. So these are all valuable things that you can actually convey to potential brides and grooms and couples about what their wedding could be like. And this is really, really valuable content because it's something that's unique to you that you can share with your clients that isn't just generic stuff out on the internet. And by providing that unique perspective, it becomes this really, really valuable content that um, is going to rank well for SEO. And the reason for that is because it is valuable and it is unique. If I wanted to create a different blog post that's not from an Insta blog, I might actually use one of Focal's prompts. And so these are carefully curated prompts that are designed to maybe ask you about topics, again, that you have unique insight on. So maybe, you know, your top three wedding venues, what are the pros and cons in your area or engagement photo shoot locations you like, um, or just basic city specific photo shoot locations, maybe the most Instagrammable locations in your area. These are all unique topics that only you know about. And what's cool is Focal kind of extracts that from you. So it's gonna ask you, prompted questions to get you talking about maybe a specific venue, maybe um, again, the pros and cons of the venue or that location. Maybe it'll ask you about 
how that venue is in different seasons. Again, all very unique perspective that only you have as an experienced photographer, all that content being useful for potential clients, you know, and then it's creating very SEO and keyword driven content that then shows up on your website um, and allows your customers to um, benefit from, from that insight here. So I'll use the Fairmont Empress. This is in Victoria as an example. It offers an amazing high tea. <laughs> it has a beautiful view, view of the Victoria Harbor, the ocean, the gardens are lush and colorful. The ballroom can easily accommodate, we'll say 150 guests. That's another thing too. Like. I, I'm often surprised at how crappy venue websites are, or venue uh, information sometimes is. If you're looking at, you know, booking your wedding and you're looking at venues, sometimes they don't even say like how many guests it's a good fit for. Um, and, and you as a photographer, you might be like, well, inside really comfortable 150, but if people are like spilling out onto the patio, then it could be like 200. Uh, it's again, all unique insight that you, only you can provide to your clients. And again, very, very, um, good for SEO because if you think about as a couple when I'm searching for a venue I'm probably typing in you know like best venues uh, for my wedding in Victoria that accommodate over 100 guests or best venues with an ocean view for example so this is the Fairmont uh, Empress in Victoria BC Canada and I'm not a wordsmith here I'm <laughs> I'm not an English major I'm just kind of typing in simple sentences and of course you can go more in depth with these um, posts it's really going to take those tidbits that you give it and and build really really great content that you know appears friendly educational and really establishes you again as the expert um, and that's what the AI blogging is all about from Focal we're not trying to create garbage AI content from scratch. We're trying to extract these tidbits from your brain, make it really, really easy for you to get in the habit of maybe after you do a shoot, import that Insta blog or jot down a couple of things you remember about the shoot. And then again, it's really just gonna benefit you um, SEO wise, but also it's gonna show your clients that you're active. It's gonna be like, oh, that's awesome. Natalie just did that shoot in Waterloo Park. Her blog post is like, came out yesterday. Um, and that's just going to, again, build so much more trust with your clients. It's going to show you're actively shooting and you're busy and, um, and it's going to add a lot of depth and expertise, um, to your website. So again, the AI blog generator can sometimes take a few minutes, but, um, we'll just give it a little bit of time here and then we'll go ahead and actually publish those posts. And I'm going to show you what they actually look like then on, um, on Natalie's um, test focal uh, creator site. They look beautiful. And again, they're always oriented towards helping you get more bookings um, as a photographer. Awesome. So here's the in-depth review of the Fairmont Empress. It's pretty sweet. This actually spits out a title. Of course, we have a very nice editor as well here. So you can edit the content in the post. You can change the heading styles, etc., within the post. And you can also upload really nice image grids here. So I'm just going to put an image grid down here and uh, just give me a second. I'm going to find some photos. All right. These are just some of Natalie's photos here. Beautiful, beautiful shots. So we add those into the image grid here. Um, oh, we need um, some photos for like mobile, even like actually even just looking at some of these photos. So here I uploaded this photo here. That's, that's this beautiful photo in the fall. I don't know if this is necessarily, you know, at water. Oh, I'm getting confused. I'm talking about the Empress right now, but you know, for that other one, if it was Waterloo park, you know, like look at the colors and she could talk about the time of year. Like if you want photos just like this, the perfect time of year is September or October or whenever it is again, very unique insight you have as a photographer that you can kind of convey to your clients. Um, so we'll pretend this image here is of the Empress uh, in Victoria. And there you go, you've got this beautiful blog post and you'll see how oriented these blog posts are towards getting you bookings. I think, you know, a lot of photographers, they, they'll make a blog post that's just a bunch of text and maybe some photos or, or even often I see like these 
1000 photo blog posts that are just like images, images, images. And then you see the scroll bar and it's like this small, the client is scrolling through their photos and suddenly they're like lost in the middle of this blog post with nowhere to go. They either have to like scroll all the way to the top or scroll all the way to the bottom. And you'll see like focal is always really considering how we can get your clients to take the next step. So there's this really nice hovering call to action. So if you do have a lot of images or a lot of content, you know, it's always saying, hey, if you really like this shoot that Natalie did, you know, go check out her packages. She probably has an awesome package for, for a shoot just like this here. So I'm gonna go back now and I'm actually gonna publish these posts. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually publish both these posts and then I'm gonna show you how they actually look and show up on Natalie's website. So you're just gonna publish both of these here. Awesome. Both of those have published successfully. Now just give me a quick second while I grab Natalie's test site. All right, so here we are. We've got Natalie's uh, test sort of focal site. This is a site that was built with our, our creator system. And I'm just gonna go ahead now and click on the blog tab. So we've published those posts and they're automatically now gonna show up here on, on the blog tab and uh, we can click into them to uh, check out the whole post. Um, and yeah, it's pretty epic. Like look at the photo image grids here that these were all again, automatically generated from her Instagram post um, using our AI assistant. And then we've got this really, really amazing content that was generated just from that little caption there. You know, again, it talks about, you know, Waterloo Park talking about, oh, talking about the rain. I mean, this is amazing, the rain, you know, how it affected the look. It created a fresh look in the park, talked about the umbrellas. Like, this is a really, really awesome blog post and really gives clients an idea of, like, if, uh, if they're thinking of getting married, um, perhaps in the park like this, those are things that could happen. It could rain. You might need umbrellas. Again, all really, really valuable content. So there is Focal's AI blogging for you. Um, I want to thank all the photographers that helped us in testing and building and giving us feedback on this feature. We are so excited for you guys to start using it. We're so excited to see the content you guys create for your customers. I know how hard it is as a photographer to put in that effort to go and create content. I know you guys all know you need to do it. Um, I hope at a minimum, you know, you go ahead and post on Instagram and that's why we made that Instablogs feature because if you're at least in the habit of posting on Instagram, you can now turn those into blogs. But I'm a huge proponent of blogging at Focal. It's just a great opportunity to um, build trust, build expertise, share some of all that experience and knowledge you have as a photographer. And ultimately that makes you seem so much more valuable as a photographer when you're able to get some of that out of yourself. Um, I think a lot of you guys, you, you forget how much um, you know <laughs> and how valuable that information is. So if we can just get it out there on your website, um, that's gonna help you so much as far as um, connecting with new and potential clients. So after you've got that all nailed down, you're writing some blog posts, you're making sure there's a clear flow from your socials to your website and packages, then what you want to do is actually set up web, a website and packages that are kind of answering these questions for your customers. You know, can they trust you? Um, can they find what you offer on your website? And can they figure out how much it costs? And so I want to talk really quickly about the power of packages because when clients are coming to your website, uh, nine out of 10 times they're landing right on your website and then they're beelining it straight for your pricing page. It's like the number one question that clients are wondering when they come to your website. I know it's unfortunate because we don't wanna boil you as photographers down to like what your prices are, but that's where your clients go. And so what I recommend is actually really taking that as an opportunity to convey information to your clients at that point. I know with Taylor, his packages kind of break down the different offerings that he has so that clients can kind of find the right choice for them right there on his website. Taylor, what do you think? How has adding packages to your website changed <laughs> how your booking process works? 
the booking process since uh, switching to fully public pricing, which Lachlan definitely pushed me at and was like, do this, try this. Uh, it's made it way easier to connect with uh, what I would consider to be an ideal couple. Uh, it's, I don't know, there's no friction in the bookings anymore. People know exactly what they want. They request to book the date and maybe we set up a phone call. Maybe they just book over email. Um, that's been amazing uh, and I've been very, very happy with it. I used to have just a starting rate listed and I would just, I would get a lot of inquiries of people being like, what is, what's in that $2,900 package? And it turns out that they're actually going to need to spend like two or three times as much to actually get what they need. Um, so obviously couples, maybe they're going to find a little bit extra money, but they're probably not going to be able to double or triple their suspected budget just because they, oh, they do like my photos. And uh, I don't know, I, I feel like I believe that for a long time. That it's like, I'm sure that they'll come in for the starting rate, they'll fall in love with my work and they'll find the, the budget. And I don't think that that's that realistic, unfortunately. Well, and I guess you just didn't want like you're not the type of photographer that like wants to get them in the door so that you can try to upsell them or almost force them to like go outside their budget. Yeah. So yeah, that's just not a personality match for me. Um, so by having packages, it's made my life really easy. Um, yeah, back and forth emails, super minimal for all my wedding couples. It seems like I'm just attracting really chill couples that just want to have a wedding day. Um, I think it's also weirdly reflected on the wedding day as well that I've always kind of said it in copy and I, I talk about it in the first meetings that I want them to have their wedding because they want to have a wedding, not because they want to have an elaborate photo shoot. And I feel like that is finally really happening kind of these past two years. So uh, that's what I have experienced personally. And I think to just add another level of transparency to your business is also incredible. Um, I, I feel like everyone has a friend that's been maybe not scammed, but maybe they went into a photographer thinking that they were gonna spend $300 and it turns out they have to spend $3,000 to get what they want. Um, I feel like everyone has one of those stories at this point. And by being completely transparent, I feel like the trust indicator, you just get a check mark um, right off the start for being one of a few people that list their packages online publicly. Um, I don't know what my fear was originally. I don't know, I think it was just like, embarrassment to be like these are my prices that i wanted to like hide it from other photographers oh. i didn't want them to know yeah but i don't know why i didn't do it I, it was maybe also just what other people in town were doing so that was what i just immediately was like oh this is the way you do it here in this town yeah i can totally understand the reasoning behind wanting to hide your prices as well like first of all if you're the type of photographer that is a really good salesperson and enjoys kind of upselling customers, then absolutely hide your prices, get them to ask how much it costs and then, you know, do your thing. But if you're the type of photographer like Taylor, who's uncomfortable with the negotiating, you don't want to force anybody into something they're not comfortable with, then packages are a really good solution for you because effectively the packages can kind of do that selling for you. My, my biggest recommendation around packages is don't make packages that are just, you know, I think a lot of photographers are guilty of this. Um, you go on their website, they have their, you know, their bronze package, their silver package, their gold package. It has the number of hours, the number of photos, and it's like, we're not in the Olympics. It doesn't need to be bronze, bronze, silver, gold. And you're also kind of commoditizing yourself as photographers, which I really don't want you guys to do because something that I find as an outsider to the industry is every photographer has something different to offer. You guys all create a different experience with your clients and that experience is actually what results in photos and that experience has to be really good um, for the photos to be really good. And I see this all the time, gold collection, silver collection, bronze collection. And this is, in my opinion, from a sales standpoint, it's really like, it's like if you were selling a car, it'd be like, slaps the roof. This baby's got 200 horsepower, four doors, a steering wheel. Don't you want to buy it? <laughs> and that is really doing yourself a disservice because I know how much effort you guys put into your work, all the gear you guys have to uh, buy, all the training, the experience, the confidence that it takes to be responsible for someone's wedding day. And if you can kind of share that with your clients when you're, when they're viewing your package page, you know, show off some testimonials, talk about 
uh, what's special about this package or who it's a good fit for uh, as clients. Like I know on Taylor's it said, hey, if you don't want any video, this is a perfect package for you. That makes it easy for them to understand, you know, what that experience is like. And it takes the, it takes the anchoring off of how many photos and how many hours it is. Cause I, I hear all the time from photographers, they're like, oh, somebody picked me because they had more photos and more hours. Well, that's actually your fault because that was all the information you really gave them to base um, their whole decision on. If you talk more about what makes you special as a photographer, the things that you do to make that experience special for them, why you're a good match or a good fit for them, and you do that through your packages, then they're not gonna care so much about the number of hours or the number of photos. Yeah, and another almost disconnected but still relevant thing to mention is that a lot of customers, uh, couples, they've probably never been married before, and when they come to your website, one of the things that they're kind of trying to figure out, like, how good are you as a photographer? And maybe they see your images and they're like, we, we like your work. But price also is a big indicator into the overall professionalism as well of your business. And it's a bit dumb, but it's something that definitely is important. Um, so when you're putting your packages out there, well, maybe you're not gonna get that person that's gonna come in for your lowest price and upgrade to your highest package. By having your larger package actually listed there, it really gives a good uh, starting point for people to be like, wow, this is a $10,000 a day photographer. And meanwhile, that $10,000 package, if you're newer, might come with two days of coverage for a two day wedding and parent books and all kinds of albums and everything that you can do to kind of build that Whopper package. But it is something that will kind of at least put you in the ballpark of what they were expecting. And it'll also set their expectation to how good the work is going to be. Um, which is crazy, but it's I don't know, it's true. Yeah, definitely. I mean, packages are just such a powerful tool because it's like what your clients are really looking for. You know, it almost doesn't matter so much the other things on your website because if they go straight to your packages, that's probably the majority of the information that they're going to take in on on your website. And so, if if you can do the bulk of your communication there, uh, you can show them your your value the experience you provide, um, your professionality, then then that's really the best opportunity for it. And so if you're gonna show your prices, do a great job of it. Don't make it confusing. Try to add more to it. Try to add reviews. Try to add you know the different things that you bring to the table as a photographer. And that's just gonna allow your clients to, to really see you differently from just another package with more more hours and more photos do you want to walk through what you so your website is your storefront do you want to walk us through what would be a, considered a good storefront for you to have you don't have to use my my website's right there <laughs> don't use mine as an example find find someone else yeah i've got lots of examples <laughs> here um tons and tons of examples let's just take brenton here he's on the first page so you know if we go over to his packages you know, he's got all his different packages. Um, he also does family sessions, which are really cool. And and he really elevates the kind of experience of his packages by showing like, you know, these are all engagement photos. So already clients can kind of be on his packages and imagine like some of the photos that they're gonna get from this package. It was like, it's, it's almost like me going and finding a Banff couples package and seeing a bunch of photos of couples in the mountains. Now I can actually imagine myself in that experience. Um, you know, it talks about, hey, looking to celebrate your engagement uh, with, with photos. This is a great way to celebrate your love, capture it, has all the policies. Um, also other recommended packages. Another photographer I, I really like, um, and she built her website with our new website creator. So she just went in, put together her website in like a day. <laughs> and she created some really amazing packages. I, I really like the way she does this. So she has this micro wedding package, but she also has like a, a courthouse wedding. And these, like I was showing you earlier, rank really well on Google because those are like the exact search terms that people are searching for. And then if you go into like her micro wedding collection here, you know, it says, um, you know, congrats that you and your partner are taking the step together. This package is perfect for those intimate weddings where it's maybe just a smaller group, your family, friends. It's perfect for like those smaller ceremonies, courthouse weddings, micro weddings. 
and and then she has a great testimonial that talks about like how uh, you know Alana she's she makes you feel comfortable she's so funny and witty she'll make you cracking up and like just from reading that on this package I can already like imagine what the experience would be like shooting with with Alana and uh, if the idea of like having a great fun laughing time getting my photos taken you know I'm I'm gonna probably go ahead and book her but also like some customers don't want to have that experience like some I actually I was I was at a shoot where um, I was watching one photographer he was shooting like a more traditional like engagement session a little little older the couple and then like a little ways down there was another photographer and a younger couple were in like this tall grass field and the younger or the the, the photographer with the younger couple she was doing this thing where like she had her camera and then she just start like laughing like ha ah! and then like it was really just out of the blue and then it made the couple like kind of loosen up and start laughing and that was like this really unique experience but then the more traditional couple with the photographer I was with they like looked over and they were like please don't do that to us <laughs> and that's kind of like what I'm talking about as far as like you as photographers you offer very different experiences Taylor he might just be more the fly on the wall and like letting you enjoy your day capturing those moments whereas you know like Alana being being witty cracking those jokes that's a completely different experience and then that again it takes the focus off of the number of hours the number of photos and allows the clients to really imagine what this is and what they're buying and now we're going to talk about a website and uh, it's your storefront so we're going to walk you through kind of what makes a good one and the important elements uh, i would say that lachlan knows way more than i do about this and it's been very interesting because i feel like no one was doing it correctly in the photography space really that whenever you would sign up for a website, any of the, the big name ones, it didn't really give this client flow uh, like we have now that is just much more effective. So yeah. what makes a good website? <laughs> Definitely, I mean, I always like to start with the basics. So what Taylor was talking about is, you know, making sure that you kind of have a website, first of all, set up that has a good client flow. And that client flow actually starts before they even get to the website. So we were talking a little bit about Google SEO. What I like to do right off the bat is do what's called a site search. So you go on Google, you type in site colon your website. We're gonna do this with Taylor's. And so right off the bat, you can see these are all like the different pages that Google knows about for Taylor. So here's his homepage. It's like Taylor Jackson, Kitchener wedding photographer. And so that's really important because um, we wanna hit those keywords, Kitchener Waterloo, so that when people are searching Kitchener Waterloo wedding photographer, Taylor has the opportunity to kind of show up. Google's gonna be like, oh yeah, his page kind of matches that search term, so that's great. So you wanna make sure that you have really good search results like this. So hopefully you don't just have like a single search result <laughs> called like nothing or home or something like that. You wanna have really nice search results where, for example, like with Taylor's blog, I was showing you with like Forefather's Wedding, he's got uh, his blog showing up and that's because his SEO is configured correctly on his website. So really that's the basics, like make sure you have a website, make sure it's actually configured properly for SEO because that's really like one of the major first touch points at the top of the funnel that clients are gonna kind of discover you, get to your website. And then now that they're actually like on your website, you know, understanding where they're going. So we already talked about pricing and packages, um, making sure you have packages that aren't just a number of photos and number of hours, but trying to convey a little bit more, make sure that clients can find the right package that's a good fit for them. And then some of the other things we wanna talk about are like making sure you appear on your website. <laughs> Don't you love this photo of you, Taylor? It's beautiful. It's my favorite. <laughs> Barcelona 92 is my favorite Olympics. That's why that <laughs> camera strap is in that photo. Uh, but it's Future. something that was really um, I feel no photographers really seem to have good headshots. So if you're ever in a space with other photographers, please just do a headshot swap so you could get a few images of yourself uh, or actually just set up an entire shoot to go out and just do it because it's that important. And to have at least one photo of yourself on your website is nice, but the more places you can kind of pepper it in so people actually know you and especially if you can do some video if you even spend some time, like you can write a script and you can do voiceover, uh, like a podcast for a promo video and use some behind the scenes footage mixed with a couple images that you've taken over wedding days. Um, there are ways for people to hear your voice and I feel like that 
kind of levels it up even more. Um, but yes, put your face on your website and also on your Instagram too. Like don't just have yeah. only your work. At some point, have something in that grid that is you that people see that it's a person holding a camera um, so that they know that you are the person holding the camera. Um, oh, that's me. Just kidding, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> I was trying to get to Lindsay. Lindsay does a great job of this and, and I wanted to show off just the way that she does it is she pins um, a photo of her in the top left. That's that's really great because it, it allows clients to see, oh yeah, here's Lindsay and then oh, there she is again and they can get to know her a little bit. Um, and then of course, you know, probably go to her website. Here she has a blog post that's gonna take them directly into like a recent shoot she did. So it shows that she's like active builds trust, also inspires clients like, oh, let's check this out. You know, oh, beautiful, a oh, golden hour engagement photos in Laura. She's got a beautiful blog post here. These are some of the photos that, you know, we could get if we booked Lindsay. It's fantastic. So great example of how that flow kind of again comes from the Google then into, into the actual website. If we go to like Lindsay's site as well too, there's a awesome photo of her. Um, so that clients can kind of build that trust, that connection. So hugely important that you actually show up on your website. It's gonna be really hard for your clients to build that connection and trust you if, if they can't see your face, face to the name, right? Also, another great opportunity uh, for your website is, you know, the different blog posts like we were talking about with Lindsay. Taylor does a great job of this too, where, you know, he's got, he's got his images and then it's a clear clear way, call to action, heading over to his packages. So having call to actions all over the site, again, really important. Different ways for clients to contact you. You can have a contact form, you can have the big pricing button, um, and then, yeah, on the different, like, recent blog posts, recent weddings that you've shot, have, have more, more call to actions there. Yeah, and then another, I think, maybe the most important part for actually making content is to make content and blog posts that are actually valuable. So when people click through to them, they actually stick around. If you if people are just clicking to a page listing on Google and then bouncing off immediately, um, that's going to reflect very poorly upon your website. So make something that people come to and hang out with and read and ingest. Uh, that could be anything from just simply creating four places to get married in your local area or just type into ChatGPT to give you a ton of different ideas for blog posts that would be locally relevant and then just tailor them to be specifically about your area in the world. Definitely. Uh, another way you could do that is create guides. Like uh, say you want to do destination weddings in Iceland or something, you could write uh, an elopement guide for uh, Iceland. Here's how to elope in Iceland. You can have lots of photos, show an example of uh, the work that you did there and, and give really valuable advice about the planning process that will rank when people are searching like how to elope in Iceland, right? Um, so providing that extra value is going to help you show up for those search terms on Google, help show clients that you have experience and that you're an expert, and then eventually like, again, lead them from the top down into your website. All right, so now someone's come to my website, they've decided that they want to move forward with the inquiry process. Yeah. What does that look like? It's all role, role play a little bit here. I've, I've found Taylor's eight hour Package. I get to play Taylor? Okay. You get to play Taylor. That's boring. <laughs> Want to switch? <laughs> I can play Taylor. No, no, no. I'll be Taylor. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm Lachlan. I'm on Taylor's site. I'm like, this package looks awesome. If I'm looking for full photography coverage and a highlight video that captures the energy of my wedding day, this package is for me. Heck yeah. I also got a second photographer who will be recording clips, um, covering multiple angles during the ceremony. That's, that's fantastic. And then... Well, I'll pretend I'm getting getting married at a lower mill. So I'll put in Lachlan. I'll say, hey, Taylor, uh, I want to book you for my wedding at Elora Mill. And then I'll submit. So off that booking request goes, so Taylor probably just binged an email into his uh, phone there that Lachlan wants to book him for a wedding. And then we're just gonna go actually into his dashboard and refresh. And we're gonna show you exactly what this booking looks like. We're obviously on a test site right now, so don't worry, I'm, I'm not getting married and I'm not uh, booking Taylor for an actual wedding, but we'll show you what the process <laughs> is like nonetheless. 
So Taylor, Taylor, we're here in your dashboard. Should we view your booking request for Absolutely, me? yes. What is going on? Seems like a hot lead. Hot lead. Hey, Taylor, I want to book you for my wedding at Laura Mill. Okay, deal. Accepting green light portal. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> it's the easiest booking ever. Just invoice me directly. Yeah, so at this point, I guess there's kind of two ways that this could go. If it's obviously a lead that is just ready to book, um, there is a way that you can just accept and create the client portal right then. And that means that your request goes out, that they pay it online in a really nice looking email. And that process can just happen. Um, for smaller shoots like an engagement session or a family shoot, this is probably likely to be the, the process. For a wedding day, most of my couples, um, at least it might be one or two emails back and forth or more likely probably a phone call. So at this point, I would get back to them with message client and just basically tell them that, hey, like I'm available these three days this week. Um, if anything works for you, let me know. Otherwise, I can find some other times. And we'd set up a phone call and just talk a little bit. I think, I don't know, I, my couples, they just wanna, again, hear the fact that I exist in real life, um, that I'm a real person. Um, I have a lot of trust indicators out there, but that's just kind of the final one, that they wanna have a conversation to make sure that there's no red flags, that we get along. I feel like that's maybe one of the, I don't know if it's overlooked, but one of the, the biggest things, at least for me and connecting with couples is that like, they just want someone that they wanna hang out with for the day that also can do good work. So if you can have even a good five, 10 minute phone call that you're, that you're not setting off any red flags for them, um, at that point, we usually wrap the call up and um, again, from my Canadian sales stance, I say if they wanna move forward, send me an email, let me know what package you'd like to go with and we'll go from there. And they'll typically send me an email maybe like an hour after the call. They'll usually just kind of chat it over for a minute um, or maybe they were in the car when we did the call and they'll send me an email and then at that point we begin this process of um, sending out the payment request and then everything is really really darn easy and uh, it just looks nice too yeah so we'll add in your wedding contract your questionnaire you'll say nice talking nice talking to you lachlan here is your payment link and contract and then super easy, you just hit the accept. That fires off an automated email to Lachlan so that I can open up the client portal. All right, so here uh, I've just received the client portal here from Taylor. This is awesome. Uh, it has all the information of the package that I'm booking so I know exactly what I'm getting and you know I'll probably forget and I can come back to this link which is really nice through the email. And this is kind of like a Google Doc where you know anytime I go in, I sign the contract I, you know, I'll put in Lachlan and eSign. And everything about my booking just lives here. Oh, I forgot to fill out my name. Put the information in here. I'll just put Lachlan in for everyone because this isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'll go ahead and actually sign that contract. And then it's really nice because for me, as the client, I have everything in one place. I don't need to open a separate email for the contract, fill that out, open another email for the questionnaire, fill that out, you know, and then I can just go ahead and pay easily with credit card. I have a lot of flexibility in the different payment options. And then when I do go ahead and pay, this client portal page will update automatically. Um, another nice thing about the questionnaire too is, you know, probably don't always have the details for everything that Taylor wants to know, probably don't have the timeline yet. So I can always just put in like, uh, a bit of information that I know I can save this because it's like a Google Doc I can come back here and add more information later so it's nice it's just kind of like one easy place for everything uh, that has to do with the booking and now we're all booked and I, I would say overall the nicest thing with the entire focal system is that all of this happens on the focal platform so your website to your bookings and payments and even hosting galleries Everything is kind of that all-in-one solution. So it's a really, really easy way to basically run your entire wedding photography business or your photography business in general. So there it is. One hour wedding photography marketing workshop. Thanks for joining us. If you are interested in getting the longer course that goes a little bit more in depth, uh, there's a link in the description. You get to hang out with Lachlan and do some more things in the wedding photography marketing world. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye.
You can still see me, can't you? Yeah.